Welcome to New York and Payday 3. Now that the servers seem to be behaving after all that maintenance, I feel comfortable releasing this new and returning player guide for Payday 3. This video is as exhaustive a tutorial and introduction to Starbreeze's newest cooperative heist em up as possible, being aimed at complete beginners to the series, OG veterans from the Payday the Heist days, and long-term Payday 2 players alike who might be struggling to get to grips with some of the major changes going from Payday 2 to 3. As much like going from Dark Souls to Bloodborne, if you don't adapt and lean too heavily on prior knowledge, you're going to have a very bad time. Most of this guide will be aimed at all new players to the game, but tips that are specifically targeted towards returning players and their ingrained habits will be marked with a little Jimmy popping into view to let you know that you are the target audience and to keep petitioning Payday Twitter Man for his eventual return. Intros out of the way, let's step into Payday 3 and learn how to heist with the best. Logically, it makes the most sense to start with the tutorials. These are much improved from Payday 2 to 3, showcasing most of the new mechanics, although admittedly not in a ton of depth and in a very low pressure environment where it might be quite hard to transfer these skills when on a heist. I spend most of my time here trying to break and speed run them, so I'm probably not the best person to ask, although I do recommend all players give them a quick look over to give you a head start on how loud and stealth in this game has changed. Immediately after, you're going to want to understand how to set up your own heister. Unfortunately, due to the nature of Payday 3's narrative starting you from nothing, you'll begin the game with only a car 4, SIG 40 and virtually no skill points. As such, you're not going to be able to experiment much here until you've actually played a few heists. So if you're a complete beginner, skip to chapter 3 of this guide to get your feet wet immediately on a heist. Otherwise, we're going to talk about customising your build and heister. Compared to Payday 2, 3 puts far greater emphasis on heist being won or lost within the mission. Preparation and skill point usage now plays a much more minor role in your success even on the hardest difficulty, which is nice in that there's a lot less pressure to know and understand the meta within this game. Heist and mechanical understanding is, at the end of the day, much more important now. Even so, the weapons, equipment and skills you choose to bring on a heist can give you the added edge, pun intended, as we're about to explore the new trifecta system for skill building. Essentially, there are three passive buffs that you can activate thanks to specific skills called Edge, Grit and Rush. Edge grants a 10% damage buff, Grit a 10% defense buff, and Rush roughly a 10% movement speed buff depending on your starting speed, all for 20 seconds. Thanks to additional skills, these buffs can be replenished, although they cannot stack, meaning 10% is the cap. This might not seem like a lot to veterans, but everything, including enemy health and damage output, has been numerically tightened in Payday 3. This results in a 10% increase, actually making a quite sizable difference, whereas in Payday 2 we were looking at multipliers that ranged up to 1000%. So don't write these buffs off just because they seem comparatively low, as they will make a difference to your weapon breakpoints. Not only do these skills provide passive improvements to your heister, they'll also enable other skills within the new skill lines. These can range from increasing your armor penetration, to making you briefly damage immune, and even increasing your lockpicking speed, and are the real keys behind the system. One of the strongest builds for loud right now involves stacking as much edge and grit as possible to activate some of the strongest passive skills in the game, and continuously maintaining these stats throughout the heist. Rush is slightly more geared towards stealth, but is still an excellent skill to have access to in any build. There are also a few skill lines that exist somewhere outside the trifecta system, including the engineer tree for sentry guns and the hacker tree which allows you to gain access to and mess with Payday 3's security cameras. Don't write these off just because they don't give you any grit, edge or rush, as they're actually some of the strongest skill options in the game for loud and stealth respectively. Now you understand the most complex element of Payday 3's skill system, it's time to understand how you can choose to specialise in any tree. Initially, you will need to research the first skill in these lines, which you will complete gradually just by finishing heist. From there, you'll need to equip at least one skill within that line to research and unlock the rest via heist completion experience. I have two guides out there for doing so quickly on Dirty Ice and Rock the Cradle. Skill lines are made up of three components though, a primary skill, which needs to be equipped to gain access to your secondary skills. This skill can also be aced at the cost of a second skill point for an additional effect. Your secondary skills will make up the bulk of any build, which are accessible once you have equipped a lion's primary skill. Here is where some of the stronger skills in the game lie, so be sure to read through them all. One excellent change from Payday 2 is that you can equip these in any order, not necessarily having to unlock from left to right as we did with perk decks. Finally, we have the mastery skills. These unlock once you've researched the final skill in the line and tend to provide more general buffs that don't necessarily synergize with the rest of the tree. As a result, they can be picked up for a single skill point without necessarily having to equip the primary skill within that tree, allowing for even more build flexibility. 
These were often great utility options to cap off any build. There are complete build guides releasing shortly on this channel, one of which is already up, but keep in mind you have a maximum of 21 skill points to play around with, unlocking a new point on average every 5 levels of infamy up to level 100. Moving on to your weapons, Payday 3 has done an excellent job of balancing most guns in the game. There are a few outliers, particularly in the SMG class at the moment, but whether you like ARs, shotguns or even marksman rifles, you've been well catered for. I recommend you use as many as possible from heist to heist as weapon challenges are one of the best ways to level up. Right now though, the assault rifle class is really overperforming, so try and get your hands on the KU-59 or VF-7S as soon as possible if you want to go on a bit of a power trip. Secondary weapons are limited to pistols and revolvers as of launch, and I'd say virtually all of these are viable. Pistol fans will probably enjoy the Strike 7, whilst both of the game's revolvers absolutely slam. Once you've chosen a weapon to heist with, it's important that you understand how to modify and customise it. Essentially, all guns in the game have weapon levels, and you'll level up your weapons by simply completing heists, with stealth heists giving XP bonuses, unlocking new attachments along the way. These attachments can actually change how your weapon feels quite substantially, transforming some long-range DMRs to up-close and personal hipfire machines. Unfortunately, the stat bars are quite hard to follow, so without any numbers backing up your choices, just keep in mind that plus signs are always a positive effect, and a minus sign is a negative one. And that means that plus recoil does actually mean that it'll be reducing your weapon's recoil, as backwards as that might sound. Play around with your weapon attachments and find what feels best for your playstyle, but remember the final few attachments on any weapon will cost C-Stacks to purchase, which is a much more valuable currency that I'll get onto later. Weapons can also be customised visually with the spray paint system if athletics are your passion, or hell, you can even splash out on a preset weapon with its own unique skin and modifications already installed. I recommend the VF7S Featherlight at level 40 if you want a real powerhouse in your hands. The tertiary gun you'll need to think about is your overkill weapon of choice. These are airdrop weapons with limited ammo, earned by picking up kills and completing objectives to swing fights in your favour. The Markham Mamba, affectionately known as Payday 2's Piglet, is a multi-shot grenade launcher which is strong against groups, but keep in mind it explodes on impact with cops and deals a lot of splash self-damage if you're not careful. Unlocked at level 40, you also have the HGT-5 Red Fox, a thermoscoped high-caliber sniper rifle that can also see heat signatures through walls and penetrate most of them. This thing is incredible and completely outclasses the grenade launcher in almost every situation. Armor in Payday 3 is also more important than ever. You have four options at the moment, ranging from the standard lining to the heavy ballistic lining. Standard holds one plate of armor, whilst heavy ballistic has four. The trade-off here is in movement speed, as well as the number of times you can go down before going into custody a 90 second timeout in Payday 3. Standard gives you 4 downs, whereas Heavy Ballistic offers just 2. Even so, unless you're doing pure stealth, I generally think the Heavy Ballistic is the optimal armor choice at the moment for almost every build in the game. Armor itself is massively changed though, with no auto replenishment as we saw in Payday 2. Instead, every time you take damage you will receive it as a temporary damage shown by this red highlighted area. The red damage can be regenerated if you avoid taking additional damage for a period of time that's dictated by the armor type you're wearing. The heavier, the longer it takes to naturally regenerate, although the plate up skill does circumvent this. Once an entire plate of armor is fully destroyed, you can no longer regenerate back into it until you've refilled the plate by interacting with an armor bag. This change can punish you for playing too aggressively, although there are skills to assist and generally make armor management much easier than it might initially appear. The final elements of any build will be your throwable, deployable and tool of choice. Throwables in Payday 3 are hugely buffed from its predecessor, there are many more skills built around them with new methods of replenishment, meaning this is a more important decision than ever before. Smoke grenades are great for objective minded players, flashbangs will help your team out the most, even allowing you to take body shields from disorientated swats, and throwing knives are great for builds with slow reload times, one shotting almost every enemy type in the game. This is a personal decision, but you can't really go wrong here. As for equipment, it is a little more black and white, at least as of launch. Medit bags restore a percentage portion of your total health bar and can allow you to go down more frequently. Ammo bags restore a portion of your ammo supply, which is helpful as you don't spawn in with full ammo in this game, as well as replenishing two of your throwable supply. Armor bags grant you one or two plates of armor replenishment depending on your skills and are by far the strongest option as of patch 1.0 as armor is a much stronger defensive resource than health. Finally, we have sentry guns, which are powerful tools of distraction with a skill line that can buff them further. Unlike Payday 2, they cost zero ammo to place and cannot be permanently destroyed, instead overheating after taking too much damage or firing too many shots. 
Once disabled, they just need to be picked up and replaced, and they're as good as new, making them much more viable than they were in the past. Finally, we have the tool, which is generally a stealth-focused utility option that you can bring into a heist. The microcam is as strong as you are creative, being used to track guards, objectives, or even call out special enemies during assaults. The infrasonic mine is a stunning tool, which can be used to protect objectives from across the map, as well as secure takedowns in specific locations out of view of cameras. The ECM jammer is probably the weakest tool in the game right now, with no loud applications, although it can be used to slow down cameras and radios right at the end of a heist to secure their stealth completion and the motion sensor is great for tracking the movements of enemies or tracking spawn locations of cops, allowing you to effectively see through walls at all times, probably being the strongest of all utility tools for both loud and stealth. If you're early on in the leveling process, try this build out using the Reinfeld A80 and Castigo Revolver. It's incredibly strong and makes use of the most powerful tools I've mentioned already without costing that many skill points to create. In terms of your character and their appearance, you can pick from six heists to represent you in-game, although this is purely an aesthetic and auditory choice, as well as having the option to choose your mask, outfit, and gloves. Once fully set up in the menus, it's finally time to heist. You have a choice of four difficulties, ranging from normal all the way up to overkill, as well as being able to choose to publicly matchmake, play with friends, or in a private invite-only lobby. Keep in mind, you will need an internet connection regardless, as the game is currently online only, unfortunately. Success on any heist is predominantly dictated by your understanding of the map, the game's core mechanics, and ability to work with a team, which is a bit of a departure from Payday 2, where your build did a lot of the heavy lifting. This means that overkill isn't off limits to veteran players, even at early levels. If you're coming directly from Payday 2, this hardest difficulty is a lot more accessible than, say, Death Sentence, but also the lower difficulties are closer in comparative proximity. I'd say the jump between normal and overkill is less noticeable, and normal in Payday 3 is a lot tougher than it is in Payday 2, so I do encourage a gradual rising through the ranks as you get used to modern heisting. Sadly, the crew AI in Payday 3 have been massively neutered in their survivability. They can just about handle normal through very hard, coming with the added utility of dropping ammo, armor, and medit bags depending on what your team needs the most, but expect them to die constantly on overkill, making this more of an online exclusive mode, at least outside of stealth. Speaking of stealth, out of the 8 heists in the game at launch, all 8 start you undetected, and 7 of them can be cleared without ever going loud, so I think it makes the most sense to start this section of the guide with Payday 3's new stealth mechanics. Payday 3's stealth system is all about being a sandbox of tools and mechanics you can leverage to successfully outwit the security instead of just staying out of sight. You can do almost everything in casing mode that you can do when masked up. That means you can sprint, crouch, and interact with objectives, as well as loot bags to your heart's content, leading to unmasked completions of many heists in the game. The only thing you can't do is jump, which is an intentional balancing consideration for the mode. As such, you're going to want to approach almost every stealth heist unmasked for as long as possible, as the risk of fully breaking stealth is much lower. Essentially, there are three area types in the game, as well as three NPC types. These areas are public, where your unmasked presence will go unnoticed, private, where you will be stopped and escorted out when witnessed by a guard, and secure, where guards will attempt to arrest you regardless of whether you're masked up or not. Secure areas are also unique in that noise you create there will be noticed. If you run or slide, guards will be drawn to investigate, which again can be used to your advantage in certain situations. The NPCs on the map range from civilians, who are always oblivious, employees who will observe and report crimes in private or public areas, as well as trespassers in secure areas, as well as security guards, who will be on the lookout for you and any potential crimes you commit in all areas, and will escort you out of private areas when caught. Also, there are security cameras that will act as stationary guards, alerting security to your presence and potential crimes in private and secure areas. There are skills that will bend these rules, so keep those in mind, and also remember that the hacker skill line has dozens of ways to confuse both security cameras and guards alike. Keep in mind too that the escorting mechanic can be used to your advantage, acting as an excellent opportunity to pickpocket keycards or create space for your teammates when heisting online. Now, all of what I've just said is relevant to stealthing and casing mode, but if at any point you hold the G key and mask up, all of that goes out the window as you'll draw your weapon. Then, if a guard or camera catches you, it'll be a case of shoot on sight or immediately sound the alarm. Masking up cannot be reversed, so keep that in mind too. However, having your weapon drawn has its own advantages, allowing you to silently deal with guards either from range or through close quarters takedowns. Be warned though, just like Payday 2, this will activate their radios, which need to be answered. Unlike Payday 2 though, there is quite a long delay in the radio actually going off, meaning you should have time to start moving the body out of sight before taking the time to answer. 
Depending on the difficulty, you have between two and four radio usages, and failing to answer in time will count for two of those chances. After using these up, the next radio you answer will put all guards on the map on high alert, entering a search mode where they'll be extra vigilant in looking for the bodies you've hidden. Stealth isn't immediately broken, but this can put you on a clock. Speaking of difficulty scaling in stealth, in Payday 3 there are things called security modifiers. These include Titan cameras, which are indestructible cameras, lead guards, who are frequently patrolling guards with endless activating radios once killed, and Cerberus cores, which prevent cameras from being hat for more than 5 seconds at a time. This means that overkill will be an awful lot harder than normal, especially when trying to sneak a heist. If all of this is too much and you end up breaking stealth and going into loud, you will also notice a new transitionary phase called Negotiation. This is where Hostages come in, one of the areas of Payday 2's gameplay loop that has been expanded upon the most in the sequel. Hostages you take are now hugely valuable for multiple reasons. One, they can be used during negotiation to slow down the initial police assault, allowing your team to set up and rush through the initial objectives uncontested. You now have an endless supply of cable ties, which you'll need to use to lock down and trade civilians. Each completed trade adds 15 seconds to the police assault timer, although you'll need to trade more and more hostages leading to diminishing returns. Also keep in mind, if you shoot unsilenced weaponry or get too close to the cops, they'll immediately break off negotiations. Personally, I wouldn't recommend trading all your civilians as they're still very useful past this point. First, you can use them as body shields, preventing cops from shooting you from the front, and instead leaving cover to rush you down with a melee strike. Second, they change the behaviour patterns of certain enemy types, with shotgun SWAT switching to their weaker pistol when in the vicinity, and the powerful new grenadier enemy type using flashbangs instead of their usual gas grenades. Finally, if you hold on to them until the end of the assault wave, you can even trade them for first aid kits, a useful source of additional healing. Don't sleep on the manipulator skill tree, as hostages in Payday 3 are now a completely different beast. You can't complete an entire heist in the negotiation phase though, so eventually you'll have to prepare to go loud. One nice feature of stealth is that most high stealth progression will carry over to loud gameplay, and with no more concealment to worry about, hybrid stealth and loud builds are entirely viable to consider. Much like Payday 2, loud police assaults will come in waves, with the cop upping the ante based on seemingly how many waves they've sent and the player's progression through any heist, throwing in more special enemies as the heist proceeds, leading to a steep difficulty curve. You'll start by just seeing first responder beat cops, regular blue swats and riot shield enemies. The SWATs are nothing special, working in small teams, often using the shields for cover, and having the ability to occasionally breach and clear with flashbangs. Headshots are incredibly important in Payday 3, even more so than in the second game. Landing them can cut your shots to kill down by a third or more, which is hugely impactful. Shields have changed quite a bit from Payday 2, being much harder to simply flank around, but having a new weakness in the form of their glass visor, which you can thread shots through to force them back. If you get too close, they can also shield bash you, stunning for a couple of seconds, although these guys are only equipped with pistols, meaning they're much more so support units on the whole. The first enemy type you'll progress into is the Zapper or Taser from Payday 2. These guys are a little slower on the draw than their DC counterparts, making them easier to kill on sight. But if you do get hit, they'll force you to fire your entire mag, limit your ability to turn around, and eventually take you down single-handedly if not interrupted. They can also prepare shock mines, which you'll have to be aware of on the ground. However, they also have a new weak spot in their charge pack, placed at hip height, allowing you to stun them and their nearby allies with well-aimed shots, meaning they're much more of a liability to their team than they are a threat to you. Next up, you'll encounter Grenadiers, an entirely new enemy type who can throw either non-lethal flashbangs across the map or very lethal gas grenades that control space, preventing you from running through them and directly hitting your health pool, ignoring armor completely. Again, these guys will be wary around hostages and have a weak point of their own, allowing you to target their bandoliers to blow them and nearby allies up. Next, we have the infamous cloakers. These guys will spawn in from hidden locations on the map and hunt down the player predominantly with their close quarters melee attacks that are one hit takedowns unless you're packing specific skills. If you are taken down, they'll beat the health out of you before finally cuffing you and leaving you to go into custody shortly after. However, if a teammate can interrupt them, you'll be able to rise to your feet immediately without needing to be revived. Their other big change comes in their mobility, gaining the ability to rapidly move up to high ground, war run and duck under your bullets, making them a massive aim test without a massive health pool. A single headshot almost always being enough to drop one. Finally, as far as specials are concerned, we have the Bulldozers, who'll only spawn at the end of any heist. These guys are no joke though, equipped with a fully auto shotgun that'll tear its way through your armour at almost any range, with a huge armour pool of their own you'll have to focus fire on. Of course, destroying their visors is essential to taking them down, so you'll want the entire team to be grouped to fight them. 
Alternatively, the HET-5 Red Fox is brilliant at taking them down, needing only two body shots to deal with them at launch. Doing so will reward you with an FAK for your troubles. Spawning alongside these final bulldozer waves are the Heavy Swats, who come with more armor than their regular blue variants, massively spiking the difficulty unless you have the excellent cutting shot skill equipped. You'll also have to be aware of the hostage rescue teams clad in white who will target out your hostage supply from wave 1 and sabotage teams in black and gold who will focus specifically on trying to disrupt the objectives you're trying to complete. It's also worth mentioning the FBI SWAT van which can spawn in the second half of most heists, creating an endless assault which seemingly changes the spawn logic of the cops slightly. You'll need to learn their potential spawns and take out their satellite dish as soon as you hear them on the map. In terms of gunplay and combat, as I already mentioned, headshots are key. All weapons have damage drop off, so keep that in mind too. And remember, heisters are now much more mobile with their new slide and mantle mechanics. However, you will want to unlearn some of the crouch jumping tech from Payday 2 and instead start slide jumping for maximum speed over distance. You'll mostly find that Payday 3 is less of a horde shooter and a little more tactical in its gameplay with fewer but more potent enemies on the map at one time. Enemies actually have the same amount of health across all difficulties, making them generally tankier overall, but not being massive damage sponges as we saw in Payday 2 on the hardest difficulties. Distance between you and them will decrease their accuracy, although they don't seem to have much, if any, damage drop off, so cover remains essential, especially with the new, more punishing armor mechanics. As I've already mentioned, armor is the way to go in loud right now, although you can't neglect health completely as certain enemy and damage types such as falling and explosions ignore armor completely, forcing you down even with armor remaining. Payday 2's melee system has also been abandoned in favor of a simplified get off me button. Melee now guarantees a stun effect on any cop hit who isn't already reeling, actually activating the tactician skill in the process but dealing absolutely zero damage. I expect this to change with future updates, but for the time being, melee's best use is for civilian crowd control to immediately sit unruly ones down. Overall, Loud is a game of attrition, with the cops trying to burn through your resources before you're able to escape, escalating things tremendously within the final couple of minutes of any heist, so things can feel like they're going great before suddenly taking a turn for the worse. Objectives have also been fairly well varied from Payday 2, with fewer drills and a lot more involved interactions, but also the addition of these Wi-Fi hacking circles which I'm not a huge fan of. Lot picking and safe cracking has new minigames which are a fun change of pace and you'll pick up on quite quickly. Also, keep in mind, you can't seem to jump into the back of the van when escaping that way on any heist. I know some Payday 2 players are disappointed about this, and quite rightly so as it's such an ingrained habit in me. If you get all this down, you should be sailing your way through a life of crime in no time at all, with each completion earning quite a few more awards than you're used to in Payday 2. For any heist you complete, you will earn skill point experience for any line you're leveling, weapon experience for the weapons you have equipped, regardless of their usage, and of course cash for completing the heist depending on the method, difficulty, and total loot secured. One additional reward that isn't explained are the unique heist favors you can earn on any successful heist. Any clear has an 80% chance of unlocking a high specific favor for one of the other seven heists in the game, but not the one that was just completed. These favors can be used in the limited pre-planning screen to change certain elements of the heist and are actually hugely powerful and well worth collecting. More basic favors such as armor bag placements and zip lines can be bought from Gage in his store before entering into a heist. These zip lines are hugely potent on heists like Golden Shark for securing all loot. Progression is also something worth focusing on, as despite not being the most popular system at the moment, you will need to understand how to earn infamy points in order to level up your account. Heist completion currently doesn't reward you with any experience. Instead, your only way to level up is via the completion of challenges. These range from completing heists in certain ways, just picking up kills with different weapons. Challenge progression occurs regardless of heist completion, and combat challenges are the best way to currently level up. I have a complete guide on how I made my way to level 100 in a week over on my channel, link below. Hopefully, this system will improve over time, but for right now, this is your best bet to unlock those later weapons and skill points. Currency in Payday 3 has also changed, with offshore accounts now gone for good and money existing only as dollars or C stacks. Dollars are your primary currency used to purchase most weapons and customization options, while C stacks is a type of cryptocurrency used to purchase final weapon attachments as well as some unique late game weapon presets or cosmetics. These can be earned to some degree just by leveling up, but for the most part you'll need to convert them from your dollar pool, trading at a conversion rate that worsens with the first 10 purchases each week. This then resets at the weekend, briefly giving you access to cheaper C-Stacks again. 
This is designed to combat the insane monetary inflation we saw back in Payday 2, but does seem to be a source of some frustration at the moment. Finally, I have a few miscellaneous tips and tricks to keep in mind that didn't really fit into a prior category. First up, heist randomization has been massively changed in Payday 3. Now, whenever you generate a lobby for a heist, it will be seeded, meaning all RNG from spawn locations to keypad codes and escapes will be fixed, no matter how often you restart. Guard pathing isn't fixed, but cameras and everything else in between are. This means that you can restart any heist and avoid whatever pitfalls befell you on the previous runs, learning from your mistakes, but also cutting corners on certain objectives. I suspect this will be tinkered with on harder difficulties in the future, as it's very abusable in stealth, but for now, prepare for these fixed seeds. Also, if you happen to roll bad RNG for a heist, you'll need to quit and search for it again if you want a chance at a different seed. As for more active in-heist tips, your team will always appreciate you if you bring the armor up skill, as it reduces your impact on the team's total resource pool tremendously. Payday 2 players may also want to consider some key rebinds, as the button for grenade has been moved to G, which inconveniently used to be the bag throwing key in the past, leading to dozens of unhappy accidents in stealth. Q is now throw bag, so if you can't get used to that, just switch it back to the old scheme. Also, shouting at and marking enemies has been moved to the middle mouse button if you are wondering where that went. Finally, fall damage in Payday 3 is quite significant and has changed to only be taken by your health pool, with armor no longer being involved in the equation. Check the fall distance and pay special attention to this in stealth, as taking any health damage will force you to immediately mask up, even if you're not ready to do so yet. Thank you so much for watching this guide, drop any questions or tips I might have missed out on in the comments below. If you're excited to play Payday 3 but unable to on your current machine, consider my channel partners over at Apex Gaming PCs for a high powered replacement more than capable of running the game, link down in the description. And take care, and I'll see you all at Golden Shark for our next unscheduled withdrawal. A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits, or get 24 hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.